This is the main PCB from inside a KU-band LNB for satellite TV reception. Its main purpose is to amplify, filter and downconvert satellite TV signals from around 12 GHz to a more manageable range from about 1 to 2 GHz. The LNB we're going to use in this teardown is a Gubei Universal Single LNB which promises coverage from 10.7 to 12.75 GHz in two different switchable bands. Removing the white plastic cap reveals a corrugated horn antenna. Corrugated horn antennas have parallel slots around the horn's opening. These slots provide a greater bandwidth and smaller side lobes compared to circular horn antennas without ridges and are commonly used in satellite equipment. Looking down the horn into the circular waveguide, you'll notice two tiny monopole antennas. Their purpose is to lead the received signal to the first amplification stages of the PCB. One is for horizontal and the other for vertical polarization. To get to the PCB, the plastic cover of the LNB is removed with a screwdriver and some brute force. All the white gunk around the metal lid might be a hint to why the brand name is Gubei. While the gunk might be suitable to prevent water ingress, it's not a suitable deterrent for me. On a side note, I don't think Gubei ever expected that their own tools would be used to disassemble another product of theirs. After removing two screws, the metal lid can be removed and the PCB is exposed. For a close-up inspection of the PCB, it can be removed by applying slight pressure on the PCB using a screwdriver and heating the pin go into the F connector with a soldering iron. The entire board is extremely small. On the back side there is not all too much happening. There is the two monopoles on the right hand side for horizontal and vertical polarization as well as the 25 MHz crystal for the reference clock signal. It would be very difficult to see all the intricate details on the top side of the board through my camera. Which is why I'll be using a digital microscope in the following circuit analysis. The digital microscope was kindly provided to me by a lector. Before we take a closer look at the circuit itself, allow me to present some evidence of why I should never work as a graphics designer. This is a hand-drawn visualization of the RF path inside the LNB. Depending on the polarization of the received signal, it will be picked up by one of the two monopoles shown previously. The separated, horizontally and vertically polarized signals are amplified by a single amplifier stage each. The desired polarization plane is selected by adjusting the supply voltage of the LNB itself. The selected signal is then amplified by a second gain stage. This is followed by a bandpass filter to reject any unwanted signals. The local oscillator's frequency is referenced to a 25 MHz crystal whose frequency is either multiplied by 390 for an LO frequency of 9.75 GHz or multiplied by 424 for 10.6 GHz. The received signal is then mixed with the LO signal, amplified once more and sent on its way to the satellite receiver through the F-style connector. A 7806 type voltage regulator is used to lower and stabilize the LNB's supply voltage coming from the F connector to a level of 6 volts. The monopole antennas are connected directly to the gates of two FET based amplifier stages. Radial stubs in the drain supply lines ensure suppression of any RF leakage into the DC supply rails. DC blocking coupling capacitors are used to feed the amplified signals into the second gain stage. A very simple coupled line filter serves as a bandpass filter before the signal enters the integrated mixer and PLL IC. This integrated IC handles the down conversion, the local oscillator frequency generation and the selection of the desired polarization plane by enabling and disabling the supply voltage of the corresponding amplifier stage. It also detects whether a 22 kHz control signal is present and adjusts the multiplication factor accordingly. It is connected to the external 25 MHz reference clock crystal. Here is a close-up of the back of the PCB showing the reference clock crystal in the top right corner and the two monopole antennas of which one is being used as a holding point for the alligator clip on the left.